Today, let's delve into the diversive world of the Star Trek Kelvin timeline. Love it or hate it, this alternate reality brought us something entirely different from the Trek we all have grown to love. On the love side of things, there's no denying that the Kelvin timeline injected a fresh dose of excitement into the franchise. The 2009 reboot introduced us to a sleeker Enterprise, revamped special effects, and a younger, energetic cast. Chris Pine's take on Kirk gave us a more reckless, yet relatable captain, and Zachary Quinto's Spock brought a whole new level of emotion to the role. But I do hate that they did that shit. The action sequences were a visual feast, drawing in a broader audience while retaining the core themes of exploration that define Star Trek. Kind of. No, 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 they didn't. And of course, these are valid criticisms too. Some fans argue that the Kelvin timeline sacrificed the philosophical depth and moral dilemmas that have been Star Trek's trademark. And I completely agree. While the original series and its spin-offs often ponder complex ethical issues, the Kelvin films lean more towards explosive action and simplified plots. It went for more of a pew-pew kind of feel with these movies. Additionally, the altered timeline brought about by Nero's interference raised questions about the continuity and coherence of the Star Trek universe. For many, this was just a major sticking point, undermining the carefully established canon of the previous series. In the end, whether you love or you hate the Kelvin timeline, it's undeniable that it sparked conversations and brought new fans into the fold. While it might have departed from some of the franchise's core elements, it undeniably expanded the Star Trek universe, offering a fresh take on beloved characters and narratives. But I still hate it.